ladies and gentlemen, uh, like me, my first guest is a billionaire and <laughs> host of the NBC reality show. I didn't say American dollars. Host of the <laughs> NBC reality show, The Apprentice, Los Angeles, which just premiered Sunday night on NBC. Please welcome Donald Trump. <laughs> Nice group. Very nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Young, attractive. Young, attractive. Very we nice. get the best looking groups in town here. Uh, let me ask you something. Let's begin. There's a little bit of controversy backstage because you're here to talk about The Apprentice. That's correct. I am not, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to completely cover The Apprentice. I am not doing my job if I don't ask you quickly at the top about this whole rosy situation. <laughs> I know you're, it's not your... Even you don't wanna... though we agreed not to discuss... Let me ask, if I was a contestant on The Apprentice and my task was to go interview Donald Trump at this moment in time and I didn't ask him about the biggest story in the news, you would fire me, would you not? Well, it seems to be a very big story, but I would say <laughs> Yes, that it's a huge story. It's on the cover have... of Time and Newsweek right now. But you also have to honor commitments. Yes, yes, and I told you... I, first of all... <laughs> wait a minute! Jeff, did I make some agreement that we would not discuss the Rosie thing? I did not. Yes, yes, you did. I did not. That's okay, but you did, but that's, don't feel guilty. <laughs> Do you feel guilty? No. I feel no guilt at all because I honor my commitments. I didn't agree to that. I said I want to ask you one question about it at the top and then we can move on. Okay, but your representatives agreed to that. What representatives? Who agreed to that? Jeff, did you agree to that? You did not. Jeff? <laughs> Jeff? <laughs> Jeff? He said he was just going to ask uh, one thing. Well, I guess, guess where you're not golfing next week. Uh... <laughs> Can I just ask you if you see a happy resolution to this whole situation? Is that possible? Well, I think I've exposed Rosie for what she is. And, you know, I don't see her ever loving me. I would think that it would never really work out. And there are a lot of people in the world, a lot of good people, and I choose to have my friends the way I like my friends. And, no, I don't see it in terms of happy. Will she ever be happy? She's not capable of being happy. Will I ever be happy? <laughs> I, I'm a happy person. I'm a rather content person. But, no, I don't see us getting together, hugging and kissing. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I, no one's expecting that. I don't think anybody's <laughs> expecting this to end with you two hugging and kissing. I just thought maybe there'd be some kind of happy resolution and maybe you see that as being a possibility. Well, I don't know. I mean, people seem to be fascinated by the story somehow, and I don't even know why. But, you know, it all started with Miss USA. I gave Miss USA a chance, a second chance, a very important second chance for her. And Rosie went crazy on her show. She just went crazy. She hated that I gave her a second chance. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't give her the second chance, I would have destroyed that young woman's life. Because, you know, you take a crown away so publicly. So, uh, you know, it just worked out that way. And then I attacked back. And I guess all the polls are very much in my favor. And people don't like Rosie. <laughs> no, no, but people do not like her. Right. And, and... <laughs> Look, Donald... I didn't come here today to talk about this. I want to talk about The Apprentice. <laughs> That's, See, that's what I want to talk being... about. But no, you got to talk about Rosie, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> well, you Please. know, I actually, I actually had this. I love Meredith Vieira. We all do, and she's doing a great job. But she started off asking me a Rosie question right. on the Today Show two days ago. A Rosie question, another Rosie question, a third Rosie question. And then she said, why do you always talk about Rosie? Right. And I said, because you're asking me a question. I'm trying very hard to get off this topic. Okay, please. Good. I want to talk... So get off it. I want to talk... Please, good. The Apprentice. Good. The Apprentice Los Angeles. Uh, we have a, a clip here from the premiere. Can we show this? Let's take a look. This is the mansion where I've set up my temporary Los Angeles office. And inside is the dreaded boardroom where each week somebody will be fired. Daddy, Daddy's coming home. Say hi, hi, honey. Hi, Daddy. Hello, honey. Welcome home. When this 14-week job interview is over, only one candidate will remain. Who will succeed? Who will fail? And who will be the apprentice? That's a crazy house. That's pretty well.
So that's the mansion that that's the mansion. I live in where yeah. we're doing the shooting, and it's where the mansion. And there's and that's another your, mansion, that, equally as nice, where the winning team lives. Right. And then the losing team lives in this horrible situation, in, like, literally mud. It's a tent, <laughs> but after the first two or three nights, I don't know how many people have lived in a tent. I haven't, but I know... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, but you what, did a few no, years no, in what, a tent no, I there. Did, yeah. I did spend some time in camp. But what happened... What was your tent like at camp? Was it a giant tent with no, a Trump a nice, on it? No, no, it was a nice tent. <laughs> but we lived there for like three hours and back into the world. <laughs> You're like, let's get out of here, and you helicoptered but out. But what uh, happens... <laughs> <laughs> with the... <laughs> it's really but, you know, with I've the... had enough of camping. Let's get out of here. <laughs> but with all that happens, with the rains and everything else, I mean, right. it really becomes a terrible place to live. And right. the losing team lives there, the other... And it really is very exciting. It's been amazing. Now, that was uh, actually uh, your baby who's nine months now, Baron? Nine months, Baron. Baron, a beautiful baby. Well, at that time, Baron was just probably two months old. Two and months very old. calm. You see how calm. The yeah, despite the fact that you were shouting it. right next to him. Screaming. <laughs> the loser at the airport is. <laughs> and he's, just, he's sleeping and just enjoying himself. Is he an, 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 what's his personality so far? He's a very calm person. Right. He really is. He's like his mother. She's calm. Right. C-A-L-M, calm. And that's what she is, and that's what he is. He's very calm. I'm glad you spelled it for me. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly have no respect for my intelligence. Uh, we have, uh, you know what we should do? We should take a little break. We'll come back. We'll talk more about this uh, with Donald Trump in a second. Stick around. <laughs> Something. I walk through uh, Times Square a lot late at night looking for love, and there's a, uh, <laughs> there is, that's my life, that's what I do, that's how I make me happy. Um, there's a giant billboard, take a look at this billboard in Times Square for The Apprentice, and there you are, and it's a great shot, but I've noticed in all of your photographs, you've always got that scowl, that, you know, that serious, I mean business, Trump scowl, is that something yeah. that... You know, do you ever go for a goofy smile, or do you, you know, find that I, this helps you? You know, it's interesting. NBC picked that picture. I have a right. lot of smiling pictures. I actually like to think of myself as a nice person, a nice guy. But NBC picked that picture. I never saw it until it got up. And somebody said, you're on in Times Square. You have a big picture. Right. I actually sh quietly drove over. I went to see what I look. You know, Times Square is still Times Square. And I thought it was okay, but it's a pretty nasty-looking picture. Nasty. But maybe that's good. Is, is that good for business if people... Fear Trump. People need to fear Trump. Well, Do they I don't not? want people. No, I, I mean, I want to have people think I'm nice, but also like an intelligent person. I think that's more important yes. than fear. fear. But in the world of business, fear is good, is well, it I've not? Well, I've seen a lot of people that are feared, and a lot of times they go down. I mean, this is the most important. It's called the brain. Having the good up yeah. here is spell, the most important. Spell that for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the changes this year is your daughter Ivanka is, right. is on the show. Uh, and I, I mentioned this to you once before. I uh, was on uh, jury duty once, and she right. is beautiful. I mean, drop dead gorgeous, but also very poised, intelligent. Very does she enjoy being on the show? She does, and she's a big fan of yours and a big fan of this show. She actually said, "Oh, she was all excited when she heard I was going on your show." So that's not so bad. But she's a big, big fan. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. But uh, now, what is? Uh, does she enjoy? Like I almost sent her over. I said, "You know, take my place, do the show, and that way we solve lots of problems." Right? <laughs> I'd have enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> what's it like? Obviously, men must be... Uh, men must always, uh, you know, be ringing the doorbell to, to, to see uh, your daughter, and then they must deal with the father, That's Donald true. Trump. What, I mean, what is that situation like? Well, I think it's very tough, and I'm very protective of all of my children, to be honest. I have really good children. I have really nice children, and I'm very protective, but... Ivanka's at that age now where I guess I'm a little bit overprotective, but it's not easy for men. I look them up and down. I want her back at, you know, like 9.30 in the evening, no later than that, etc. And I, I try and watch... 9.30's but, reasonable. But you know what? How old is Ivanka? Ivanka's 24. <laughs> 9.30, that's kind of tough. You know, I, I'm starting to give up. Go to Chuck E. Cheese, leave at 9, you're here at 9.30. You're giving I up. I mean, she's got her likes and dislikes, and there's not much that we as fathers, as we all know, a lot of fathers in the audience, I mean... There, uh, there is not much we can do about that. So I, I just hope that she picks the right guy because right. there's nothing more important than relationship, getting together, and having somebody that you can love and like 
at the same time. It's very important. Now, I, I have to ask you about your star. On You're getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, is that right? Yes, I am, next week on Tuesday. Okay, and you know, I'm always obsessed. That's a, that's a big honor, uh, one that uh, may or may not ever happen for me, but if it would, <laughs> let's say it did happen for me, I know the way I think I would be obsessed with where my star was the placement of my star. You are a real estate location uh, genius. Location, location, location. You must be obsessed with where's my star. Well, as, as soon as I heard that I was, it's a really a great honor. They do it very seldom, and it's a great honor for me. And I look forward to it. In fact, uh, a, whole, a very good friend of yours is actually presenting it to me. Do you know who that is? No, I don't. Mr. Jay Leno. Jay Leno's going to give he's you the star. Be, That's very nice. Do it. Of it. I'm going to yeah. have Mark Burnett. A lot of people are going to be there, but it, it's going to be great. No, I was very obsessed initially with the location. Right. And we got it right in front of the Kodak Theater. Right. That's very smack. nice. So it was very important to me. Well, and you, also, who are you next to? Who are the other stars? I, you know, like, what if you're next to Bernie Coppola you know, from The Love Boat? And you're uh, like, oh, come on. Are you a big fan of the old movies? Because I am. You bet I am. And when I like look at Errol late, Flynn. Late 80s. Oh, I meant love. When I okay. look at Errol Flynn, <laughs> when I look at Cary Grant, Clark right. Gable, guys, I mean, do we really have that today? I don't think so. I now, you think see we do. Okay. <laughs> I mean, outside of yourself. So I, any, anywhere, anywhere in that vicinity we go. But it's right smack in front of the Kodak Theater. So that was sort of cool. All right. Well, uh, The Apprentice Los Angeles airs Sunday nights at 9 right here on uh, NBC. I know you didn't have to stop by, but I appreciate that you did. Well, Thanks thank for being here. Thank you very much. Donald Trump, Megan Good coming up to take a break. We'll be right back.